walk by some of those sanctified people. And I just want you to take your finger and put under their nose and see if they're breathing. Because my word says, let everything, let everything that has breath, praise you the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Oh my God, do we have any lively stones in here? Woo! When I think about the goodness of Jesus, some of y'all didn't come from. Some of y'all didn't come from South East. Some of y'all thank the Lord for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, and our hearts have felt, but now it's time to get into the Word, so the Word can get into us. David said it this way, this Word have I hid in my heart, so I would not sin against thee. I'm telling you, it's about the Word, y'all. Get the Word consecrated in your heart. Read it, study it, meditate on it, and then walk in it. And won't God turn it around for you? Somebody know what I'm talking about. I want to talk this morning about being delivered out of the valley. The valley. We've been talking about deliverance and Bible study over the last couple of weeks. And do you know people in the church, I'm not talking about the world. We know what the world is bound by, sin. But I'm talking about in the church when we know the word, we've seen the word being activated in our lives. We've seen people who've come through miraculous I mean stories of having cancer racking their body and then being completely healed where the doctors confound we, we've seen uh, uh, reconciliation of marriages and, and, and all kinds of things that God has allowed to happen but yet we sit 
in bondage. We sit in that valley. We, we sit and not remember that God before us, that's more than the world. I wish I had a church this morning. That's more than the world against me. Hallelujah. Turn your Bibles quickly to Isaiah 50. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, you still got strength in the valley. You still got strength in that dark place, wherever you find yourself, whatever you're going through. Man, this COVID, man, I rebuke this stuff in the name of Jesus. I want you to go back to the pits of hell and where it came from. I'm so sick and tired of it. I'm sick and tired of seeing my friends, my neighbors, my relatives go through this stuff. Been through it myself. God allowed me in 2020 to come through it. And I tell people, that they'll say, yeah, that COVID hit my house. And, you know, I had a box of tissue, and after a while, some orange juice, I, I was feeling like, I still don't get my taste back. Somebody just told us on last night that they don't have their taste, and, and they hope to get it back and all these. But don't you know, in May 2020, when God allowed me to go through that, I was in the hospital for 11 days. I was on oxygen for seven out of the 11 days. I had acute pneumonia going in and didn't know it. But let me tell you, in that valley place, Jesus was there. I never, I never ever doubted whether I was coming through because the Lord was speaking to me as I laid in the hospital bed. Have you ever been sick in the hospital? And they have tubes and the beeping and all that's going on. And all I can think of is, Lord, you're going to break me out of this. I know you are. So I'm going to give you thanks right now. And I'm telling you, losing 30 pounds in 11 days is not fun. I just didn't have an appetite, but I could taste everything. And I think the hospital food took my appetite. Isn't that something so good? <laughs> It was, oh my God, it was horrific. Nothing on the cooks or whoever they found off the street to come in to cook. Nothing against them. But mother, I remember eating that stuff. I said, I gotta make it work. I gotta keep my strength going, Shanty. I gotta keep my strength going. Yeah. And the lunch came in. I thought it was breakfast because they all it all tasted alike. <laughs> I said, Lord, have mercy. I'm in the valley. <laughs> and I called my son up over here, my youngest son. He and his wife said, do door dash. I said, dash it over here. Dash it over here. <laughs> and I'm telling you, it wasn't my appetite. It wasn't my taste, buds. It was the food. <laughs> because they sent me over a 12 and sub and that sub didn't have a chance <laughs> I took care of the sub and I think I took a few nails out too <laughs> all I'm saying when you in your valley place and you go through don't make your valley place your staying place I, I wish I had somebody some people misery loves company Sometimes people will wallow in their misery and they get used to it and it doesn't take much effort. They get comfortable and they don't want to come out of it. Let's go to the book of Isaiah. I'm not even going to tell you the name of the hospital. I want to put them on blast. Thank God for doing that. Thank you, Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let us stay. Woo! By the way, I got them to do it the second time, and they didn't get my food to me. Did I tell y'all, they didn't get my food for about three hours. It was just sitting in the emergency room. And when it got there, the food was looking so sad, I still ate it. My God, it was good, too. <laughs> Hallelujah. You just got to know when you're in your valley place, do what you can do. And the children of God, guess what? We have weapons of our warfare which are not carnal, but mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. So you're going to, I don't care who you are, because Job said it this way, man born a few days and full of trouble. 
If trouble ain't hit you yet, it's going. It's on its way. I'm not. I'm not trying to be a bad messenger. Just live long enough. Okay. Let's look at the book of Isaiah, chapter fifty, starting at the first verse. Thus saith the Lord, Where is the bill of your mother's divorcement, whom I have put away, or which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you? Behold. For your iniquities have ye sold yourselves. In other words, you're in your own sin. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So you got yourself in this situation. Behold, for your iniquities have ye sold yourself, and for your transgression is your mother put away. Wherefore, when I came, was there no man? When I called, was there none to answer? Is my hand shorten at all that it can't not redeem or have I no power to deliver behold at my rebuke I drive the sea I make the rivers a wilderness their fish stinketh because there is no water and dieth for thirst clothe the heavens I clothe the heavens with blackness and I make sackcloth their covering Here's the obedient, the obedience part. That, that part is talking about being separated from God. Sin separates us from God. Do y'all understand that? I don't care who you are, whether the, see, the sin can be seen by man or not, God sees all. So don't think you hiding stuff from God. God sees it. God sees it, okay? The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He wakeneth morning by morning. He wakeneth mine ear to hear as the learned. The Lord God hath opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. For the Lord God will help me. Look at somebody say, the Lord going to help you. The Lord God will help me. Therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face like a flint and know that I shall not be ashamed. He is near that justified me who will contend with me. Let us stand together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God will help me. Who is he that shall condemn me? Lo, they all shall wax old as garment. The moth shall eat them up. Who is among you that feareth the Lord, that obeyeth the voice of his servant, that walketh in darkness and hath no light? Let him trust in the name of the Lord and stay upon his God. Behold, all ye that kindle a fire that compass yourself about with sparks. Walk in the light of your fire, and in the sparks that ye have kindled. This shall ye have of mine hand. Ye shall lie down in sorrow. Let the church say amen. Amen. You may be seated. I just want to talk to you about having strength and courage and the fortitude or the endurance to stay in the valley until God brings you out. Stay in the valley until God brings you out because there is strength and there is something to learn in the valley. Okay? It's something to learn. So don't get out too fast because God will bring you out in due season. I want to talk to you this morning, if I can, uh, about your valley experiences or, or experience. We say that we are blessed and highly favored of God. We, we go around and people say, how you doing? And first thing come out of my mouth, oh, blessed, highly favored. Or, oh, I'm, I'm blessed. But we, we walk against what we just proclaimed, that we're blessed. So being blessed doesn't mean you have all the money you need. Being blessed doesn't mean you have the right relationships in your life. Being blessed doesn't mean you got a big car, big house, that's material blessing. Get a job, you might be able to get that. I'm talking about the intangible blessings of God. 
the eternal blessings of God is the spirit of God in us. That when we go through a valley, I wish I had somebody, we can shout another time. But God is telling me to encourage the people to let them know that even with COVID, with the conditions of this country, the political uh, uh, things that we're going through, with politicians going at each other, making it a circus, with all the things that's happening, he's still God. Amen. He's still God. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, and they that dwell therein. Everything belongs to God. So therefore, I got to stay with God because guess what? My house, my car, my money, everything belongs to God. I'm just a steward. I'm a manager of what God gave me. So if I'm in this valley place and I'm low on those things, that means that God has something that's about to come into my life that he had to take me to the valley. Sometimes God will allow you to go through things just so when he presents that thing you really are going to be over, or, or, or they tell me to grab a mic, we thank the Lord. Y'all going to have to give me one of those cool mics that, you know, I don't know. Anyway. But let me tell you something. When you're going through, that's the best time that God can get your attention. Y'all get, look, when black folks were coming up, I'm not making this a black or white issue, but when black folks came up way back, I heard the stories. They had no air-conditioned church. They didn't have, they didn't have no electricity. They had none of that candlelight services. And when they were going through, they didn't murmur and complain. You know what they did? Sometimes they wouldn't say a word. All they do is moan and groan. I used to, grandma used to moan and groan. And, 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 and since Chantel, I don't remember her. Um, but Grandma Corey used to moan and groan. And I, I thought something was wrong. Grandma, you all right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She was, you know what she was doing? She was connected so much with God that she was in peace within herself. She had the fruit of the spirit in herself. She was going through a dark place. And she would hum. And I, I remember, you ever been through a dark place? See, see, some of the children here will never experience what I'm talking about. They, they'll never, because we spoil our children. They'll never experience some of the things that I had to experience coming up. And I thought we were rich until I looked back. I didn't know no better. I didn't know what my mother and father was going through. I didn't know what I didn't have because we didn't have social media. We didn't have the exposure to the internet. We didn't have the, so, so my world was right here, Southeast Washington and Marshall Heights. That's all I knew. I knew, I knew certain, certain groups get together. You don't go in that group. Cause if you had your lunch money, you didn't have it no more. There's certain things I knew about my neighborhood. But at the time, I just thought it was normal. But looking back, we were poor. I thought sardines were good back then. I can't stand even mention them. I thought, look, look, y'all know my bologna sandwich experience. Brother Marcus, I ate so much bologna, I started smelling like it. I won't eat it today. These are dark times for a lot of people now because even with getting more than what I just mentioned, they still feel like they're in a dark place, but they don't understand that God is still providing. God is still letting them see a new day. God is still providing. I remember us going through, and my sons were in private school. And my income had dried up. I was self-employed. My income had dried up. I hadn't seen a check in almost a year. We were living off First Lady's money. That's why I got into that speech. Babe, you know, what's yours and mine? We're all in this together. No, we started out that way. We started out that way. But I remember it was looking back. It was the darkest time. When we were going through, when you're going through the valley, when you're going through certain situations. See, I, I can tell you about the lion's den, but I want to talk to you about some real stuff this morning. Is that all right? Yeah. 
I'm talking about when you have doubt and fear, you're in the valley, and you don't think you're coming out of the valley. You know what? I got a reclined chair while I was in the valley, and I said, Lord, I know you hear me. Lord, I know you know what you're doing. Lord, I trust you. But see, faith came by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It wasn't of my own faith. It wasn't of my own might. I had to trust in God. When I looked at my wallet, and you know, I think back on that. I knew I didn't have nothing in my wallet. You ever do that? Go to pay for something? Oh, like somebody stuck something in there. <laughs> you look in your wallet. You know you don't have anything. But let me tell y'all something. It came a day when I started trusting in God. It came a day when sin stopped separating me from God. When I said, Lord, I yield to you. That we would get in these situations. And money would come seemingly out of nowhere. Situations would get resolved that we thought it was over. I, we were in a townhouse and nobody knew. My family didn't know. They didn't know. We were getting foreclosure notices. Saying, you're going to be out by this day. And I had just started coming into the Lord. And I said, my God. I didn't understand. I didn't have full understanding. I, I, I'm like, Lord, why are you allowing this to happen? Why, why are you doing this? And if the Lord, if I could hear an audible voice, I think the Lord would have said this. I didn't sign the mortgage papers. You did. When we take responsibility and accountability for what we do, and we begin to address it, that's when we'll begin to see God release us from some of the things we find ourselves bound in. We find ourselves in the valley place all the time. You know, it, it's, 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 it's funny. I know it was funny. Good times was funny, right? But after a while, I got so upset they didn't let them get out the projects. Did anybody feel the way I feel? I wanted to see them come out of the projects. Because I don't believe in, and they show the black family trusting God and doing certain things. And they just show, they seem like they got worse. One episode, I remember, and this, this goes back to us sometimes. One episode, it seemed like they were coming into their, their own, and, and um, James got this big job, and then they killed the daddy off. Right. <laughs> then you turn around, the, 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 the daughter married this football player, he gets hurt. He don't get the million-dollar contract. I was like, that's not good times. <laughs> And sometimes we go through hardships and challenges and, 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 and we declare these are hard times. They're not hard times because each and every day, I wish I had somebody, each and every day we wake up, we got another chance. Another chance. Make a decision to win and then go win. Stop waiting for someone to cater to you and trust in God. Get into your word. Let the word get into you and watch God really turn things around. Can we give the Lord a praise? It seems like our finances are stretched. We're robbing Peter and Paul. We still can't seem to get our debts under control. That comes from discipline. We try to save money and build our accounts, and it seems like it dwindled down to nothing. That's because we're still dipping and dabbing in sin. Because I'm telling you, my Bible told me, uh, it said I once was young, uh, but now I'm old. Uh, and I've never seen the righteous forsaken. I wish I had somebody. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging bread. What am I saying? As long as you are in God and God is in you, you will never, ever have a bad day. We decide to have a bad day. When we go through bad things, we decide this is a bad day. You know the old adage, Monday morning, hey, good morning, what's good about it? You're alive. You got a chance to win. You got a chance to excel in God. You got a chance as long as you have God on your side, you can come out of that valley. Somebody been through a valley experience in here.
And you turn to mama, you turn to daddy, you turn to auntie, you turn to everybody in the flesh. Why not start with Jesus? Turn it to God, who is the author and finisher of your faith. When we turn to God, guess what God said? I'm going to show you, son. I'm going to put a table in the presence. Oh, my God. Won't he do it? He said, I'll place a table in the presence of your enemy. He's just not going to put a table. He's going to put everything you and I need on this table. Because in that chapter it says, the Lord is my shepherd. And I shall not want. Here's the conclusion to that. David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I fear no evil. David said the shadow of death. Always call that scripture, that, that whole passage of Psalm 23. My lie still and cheat. Because he said, lie you in green pastures. I'll put you beside the still water. And then the cheap part is the shadow of death. It's not death. It's the shadow of death. Things that could come about. But while you are in the valley, God's going to take care of you. Anybody in the valley right now, I dare you to stand right now and trust that God is going to pull you out of this valley. As long as you draw nigh to him, he'll draw nigh to you. I'm talking to someone in here. You've been going through a valley. It's enough. You, you, you seem to not be able to get right where you believe God wants you because it's always a valley experience. If you haven't, if I'm talking to someone in this place, you, you know, the cameras are not on you. And if they were, let me tell you, when they made this call to me, all to call, I stood up. I didn't care about who was there. I was this businessman back then, too. I'm a dignified businessman. God had broke me down to nothing. It broke me down to nothing. I thought I knew all these things. I was so smart. I did just what the Bible says. Go look at Romans. It said professing to be wise, we become fools. That's the word of God. But when we walk with God, God's going to make everything all right. If you trust God today in your valley place, I don't care who you are, where you live, what you're trying to accomplish. If you put God first, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. If you put God first, you won't have money problems. Anybody in here have a money problem, give me your money. We got to watch how we speak. I got a money problem. Yeah, you do. Because you just spoke it. Now, the problem is, it's keeping it. The problem is, is, see, a lot of people can make money, but they don't know how to keep it. Because there's no discipline. There's no understanding or education. You have your money work hard for you. I know people who work 10 years because they made their money work for them. Yeah, I'm talking this to church folk. I'm sorry. I, I, no, I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry. These are some of the things that hold us back from achieving greatness that God has placed in us. If you believe God has placed something great in you, I want you to stand in this building right now. If you don't believe that, don't stand. God has placed something so great in you, but it's dormant. It's in you. It hasn't been executed yet by you. It, my God, hallelujah. You feel this thing if you receive this thing God has placed something great in you but the valley you gotta have courage you have to have trust you have to have faith and I'm talking about in God not in yourself fully dependent upon God 